This is actually uh, both. It is a discussion discussion session for those of you which are not familiar with how it works in uh, uh, DevConf discussions. So uh, I just have a couple of uh, introductory slides on an experience of mine that I did in doing some campaigning for doing LC bugs fixing, and then there will be an open discussion on some specific topics. So this, initi this initiative of mine is that I've been doing for uh, several months. Uh, it's called, I called it RCBW for uh, Release Critical Bugs of the Weeks. And the idea was basically to fix an RC bug, which is a release critical bug, more or less every day, and to actually do an NMU, which means that you fix an RC bug not only in your packages, but also in packages of other people, and to actually do some announcement of the activity, and in particular to do that once per week in the hope to encourage other people to do the same. So before going to the detail, just some credits. So the original of this is not mine. It's from Steiner Gunnarsson, which in the release cycle, I'm not even sure if it was uh, Lenny, maybe it was uh, even Edge, started doing that. And every day, he fixed one RC bug and blog post about that, about how he did that. And he too tried to um, actually have people doing the same. And also, I would like to thank all the people that actually joined the initiative and started doing the same in the hope of having more and more people uh, working on the same task. So the, my motivations to actually have that initiative is not the, the, more intu the most intuitive one. So in particular, I didn't hope to fix as many RC bugs as possible in the hope to release squeeze like after a few months. That was not the, the main goal. Rather, the goal was to try to have some more collaborative way of fixing RC bugs, and in particular of having actually a Debian release happening. So um, for quite some time in Debian, we have a couple of myths, which I believe are uh, counterproductive to the way we do releases. In particular, we have, oh, we have believed for a long time that NMUs are bad, so that if you do an NMU of a package of someone else, that someone else can like, feel that you are entering in his ground, or you're doing something you shouldn't have done, or this kind of stuff. And that in general, NMU are not welcome. So you should really think twice before actually doing them. So I was trying to see if those two myths was, were really true or, or, if it was, or if they were just myths. So my underlying assumption for doing that is that I think that the way we currently release and the way in which we have a lot of people in distribution who just care about their own packages, I think it, it doesn't scale. So we can't keep on growing and having lots and lots more packages in the distribution and imagine that just the release team will care about fixing all their C bugs and having a release. That simply cannot work for much longer. So I thought that we need a cultural shift and uh, I, I thought that trying to do something like this could have helped in verifying whether we are ready to have this kind of cultural shift. So some details on the actual initiative. So it went on for 26 weeks, I believe starting in September last year. I try to have uh, one release critical bug fix per day. On the average, it's been a bit less than that. I made about uh, 180 NMUs. And I'm not claiming for sure that it was the hard bug to fix. So we were quite far away from the release, from the release phrase. So I probably fixed the easy one, but still uh, RC. And I'm, I was really surprised by the feedback on maintainers. In particular, I got no single complaint from any one of the guys who got NMU. So I got no harsh mail saying, hey, what did you do with my package? Why you did step in or anything like that? Nothing. Uh, I got a couple of overrides, meaning uh, I did an, an NMU to fix an RC bug. I delayed an NMU in particular, like uh, two days or five days or seven days later. And the maintainer actually did a, a proper upload to override my NMU, fixing the bug nevertheless. So even if it was not, I think, really polite to do that without even getting back to me, nevertheless, the bug got, the bug got fixed. And I got a lot, a lot of thank you messages. So people happy about having their packages NMU'd, having their uh, bugs fixed by others, and actually looking forward to collaborate with the guy who actually did the NMU. Um, about the having other people doing the same, about 10 people started doing the same um, and started posting about that. And they are still going on even if I, I've stopped doing that. So um, I'm very happy about the result. And in particular, I think that the myths you should, not, you should not do NMUs has been dispelled, at least in my, in my opinion and for me. And uh, uh, I think that all of this would have been quite pointless without communication, because the goal was really to have others doing the same. 
So how did I communicate about that? So a web page with motivations, and uh, that's the URL where you can find it. Um, in that page, I put the motivation for doing that. So stuff like what I've been telling you now, and also stuff like checking whether squashing RC bugs is something which is sustainable in the long run. And I think it is, because many RC bugs are actually just packaging bugs that, in theory, everyone contributing should be able to, uh, to fix. On the web page, I also put the NMU workflow that I followed, best practice for doing NMUs, and pointers to documentation like the wonderful bug squashing primer by uh, Steve Langazek, documentation, and all this kind of stuff. Then, uh, once per week, I, have to, I, I blogged on Planet with a brief summary of, um, of the bug fix with pointers to that so that people can actually check the BTS and maybe point out uh, mistakes in the fixes or this kind of stuff. And also point us to other people that during the week joined the initiative. Um, that's pretty much it. So this is my experience. So the point of this both for me is to actually share this kind of experiences. So I would like to hear experiences of others doing the same, in particular, which kind of feedback they got from the people which received the NMU. And there are a lot of other to interesting topics that I think it's worth discussing here like uh, the point of actually advertising this kind of campaigning. Is it something which is really useful, or is it just annoying spam that gets on planet and people have to, to just scroll down and pass to the next, next post? Something more substantial. Is the goal of having more collaboration in how we release something which Debian would like to pursue or not? Do you think that in the future we will have uh, strong packages and only maintainers will be able to work on their own packages? Or rather, do we think that should be something very more collaborative? If it is the case, how can we um, motivate people to do that? Should we, for instance, start in the, during the NM process, tell to people that they should look out for RC bugs and other packages and do NMUs? Uh, how should we communicate about this kind of stuff? Uh, what about the current NMU roles? So we have something, some very precise roles for doing NMUs right now. We can find in developer reference 5, 11, 1, blah, 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 which tells you which kind of delayed queue you should use to fix a specific kind of bug with respect to how old it is and other parameters. Um, do we need some NMU equivalent for removing packages? Because when you do FC bug fixing, you have quite some bugs which just denote that a package should be removed from the, archi from the archive. And, and for that, we really don't have a process which is like NMUs. So we, there is also always some kind of uh, uncertainty. Should I ask for the package removal even if I'm not a maintainer? And this kind of stuff. And uh, all in all, the question is, if you have done, done any news, do you think that having the maintainer feed was a feature or a bug? I mean, do we really think that having a maintainer associated to each package is something that helps the quality of Debian or not? So um, I'll just pass the mic. There are a couple of microphones that we can use to start sharing experience on this. And I ask all of you to help in taking notes. And you can do that using uh, Gobby. So just a second, okay. Um, ah, it's better this way, probably. Just trying to see if we can fit. So there is a document in Gobby Debian Net, which is called VC10 Both LC Bugs, where we can take the notes of this of this uh, of this bot, and ideally. We should post them to Debian project if something, uh, some substantial proposal comes out of this bar. So, to you, you have the experience to share. I should what? Ah, I'm not connected. Okay. No, but I changed the network, so maybe I think I, when I change my connection. Go ahead in the meantime, please. Um, so I did a number of NMUs or sponsored a number of NMUs um, with a contributor named uh, Jerry Alto. Mm -hmm. Jerry Alto, and uh, the feedback was was mostly positive. Um, I think very similar to yours. Um, a number of the packages that we NMU'd, though, really the maintainer field, the maintainer wasn't there. Okay. And so we would always um, uh, file an intent to NMU, 
and then we would uh, upload to a delayed queue so that if the maintainer just happened to wake up, maybe they didn't respond to the first email because we were annoying them, but maybe mm -hmm. they would. Um, and then, but then the feedback that I got, and this is what I have to talk about, is how we change that not all NMUs are equivalent. NMUing an active developer's package is very different from NMUing someone who hasn't done an upload in, in three years. Um, so that's, I guess that's, I'd like to just throw that out because the feedback I got was, hey, you're violating the NMU policy. Um, and there was a, a brief discussion okay. about that. But. So I guess an interesting question related to this is how you define whether a maintainer is active or not. So how can you anticipate whether the feedback will be good or not? Do you, have you found some roles to do that or something uh, like that? No, I, I think it, that's, that's a good open question. I mean, the, I think uh, according to policy, I should have been going through the Debian QA group to determine whether or not the maintainer was active. But um, if you look at a package and it's using Deb Helper 3 or 4, <laughs> uh, the assumption in my mind was that, that we were doing more common good by simply moving. And so the other thing we did is in addition to fixing the bugs, we would try to freshen the packaging because when the packaging gets that old, I think it's essentially unmaintainable, at least in the collaborative sense. Yeah, the problem is that we, with NMU, we have the practice of minimizing the changes. So usually you are not actually, it's not, it's not recommended to change the packaging. Right. Michael, Mark? Hi. Well, I think his point in front is that he disagrees with that recommendation. Wh where are you? Okay. Oh, hi, yeah. Okay. Um, I didn't catch your name, but uh, I think I understood that uh, if, you, if you're interviewing some his, you know, our old package with old packaging, uh, you're going to have to do a lot of work. I, I guess it's a trade-off. On one hand, if you freshen the packaging, you can introduce new bugs. On the other hand, if you don't freshen the packaging, like maybe the new version of Dev Helper actually support policy better now, or uh, maybe it'll be easier for people to maintain. So you might be creating bugs, you might be closing them. It's kind of iffy as if that policy is great. Well, well I, okay, just a comment on that. I mean, so Dev Diff is a fantastic tool, and it's very easy to, to verify that you are not introducing packaging issues. Um, so uh, we, we try to take great care. I guess, uh, so my name's Tony, T. Mansell, for those um, who don't know me. and which I think is almost everyone. <laughs> if I could interject here, one of the things is you do run across packages like this that are not maintained. Uh, one of the most important things is to identify these maintainers who are not maintaining their packages and start the MIA process and or consider whether this package needs to be packaged in Debian at all. Um, there's nothing worse than, I mean, letting a package struggle along by QA uploads or NMU uploads. For example, a package that hasn't been uploaded in three years is a great candidate for QA upload. That doesn't, I mean, you may need, you need to communicate and give the maintainer a chance to respond, but that's, that's not something that's being well maintained in, in most cases. I mean, there are exceptions. There's some packages that just don't need to be uploaded that often. But uh, in, in general, if there's a bug and it hasn't been uploaded for three years, then it, it needs to be QA'd or the maintainer needs to be MIA'd. Hi, I'm Mark Shuttleworth. Um, so first I would absolutely, I think this is brilliant. Um, I think that one of the most dangerous memes is, is this idea of exclusive control or exclusive say. It causes all sorts of, not, it causes not, not, not only problems with specific packages, but then all sorts of other social problems as well. And this is, a, this is a very good exercise, I think, in showing that collaboration can work very, very well. Um, on your provocation, though, I would say that something we've learned, I think, to our regret in Ubuntu is that if you, if make it opaque as to who a good point of contact is, you, 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 you lose a lot of potential opportunities for collaboration. So we have a practice, which I don't really like as a practice, of, ma of making just the Ubuntu developers as the main, marking you know, the Ubuntu developer team as the maintainer of anything in main, or Motu as the maintainer of anything in universe. And I, I often seen cases where somebody wants to climb in and, and work with someone, or work on a package, and they just, that, that obfuscates who they could actually most productively uh, deal with. So what, what I would recommend is that you have a, a, a very quick and um, sort of automated fallback mechanism where if it's clear, especially if it's clear in a, a sort of bat robotic, you can't argue with a script kind of way, that, that someone isn't responding as a maintainer, that you then make that clear in the package with, in the maintainer field. But alternatively, you give people the opportunity to stand up and say, look, I'm, I'm willing to be the, the go-to person on this package. Well, addressing that and the provocation again, I think we're a little bit spoiled in the Debian Perl team by having um, very, very active Debian developers who um, upload bug fixes very quickly. So the packages are in good shape. There tend to be lots of them done. 
And the collaborative team model really allows anybody, um, a complete newbie, to contribute right away really quickly. So um, a single maintainer, I'll stand on a limb and say I think it could be a bug. Team maintainership, I think, is really the only thing in Debian that's going to scale to the 25,000 plus packages we have. Um, I think teams are working in other places. I think Debian Med, for example, is a, a good example. So um, maybe if we explore that model a little bit more, that might help us scale. I think, in fact, that the problem, so I completely agree with you that the team maintenance is the way to go. I think the problem is actually spotting the corner cases. Because while I agree that we have a lot of individual maintainers which are very, very active and respond to bugs quickly, it is not always the case. And in particular, when people reach out, we, we not always have the guarantee that they actually orphan their packages. It becomes difficult to understand whether, I mean, if you look from the outside, you really no way to understanding whether if a package from its metadata is maintained by an active person or not. You can do some statistic, you go in the bug tracking system, you will look at the last time the, uh, the maintainer replied, to, but it's, it's really, really difficult. So I think most of these problems are actually related to trying to identify that corner cases and work around them. Wait for the mic. Hi, um, my name is Jaroslav Galchinka, and my question is, I wonder how many packages on your system are out running any mute versions at the moment? Oh, that's an interesting question. So we have a couple of tools to actually have easily a list of orphan packages, of RC buggy packages. I don't know if we have a quick way to, to well, OK, well, we can just do the some graph. Dash L, some regular yeah, if someone wants, I would like to keep the questions here. So if someone wants to, would like to do that, it's, uh, it's an interesting uh, experiment, actually. I would like to know who actually uses this uh, low threshold NMU page. Is it good? Do people go there before doing an NMU? So or just, 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 user? just a brief description, just a few words on what it is. So when we, I think when we started to have some popular, when we started to make popular team maintenance in Debian, at some point in the same spirit, someone created this wiki page on wikidebian.org, which is called low threshold NMU, and which is a page when you can enlist yourself to declare, okay, I'm fine with NMU my packages. I'm fine if other people NMU my packages. Please do that. I don't need any delayed queue. Just go ahead. So in the beginning, it was really a good idea. And I think it has a communication importance in showing that a lot of people are in that page. But I, I pose this question here because I think that any, I, nowadays it's completely useless. So I've never looked into that page to actually check if the guy um, was packaging and NMUing is in the list or not. I just use the default the regular rules because it's just simpler. If the guy is really in that page and he is really happy about people having um, about people and his packages, can just reply to the, notif to the my notification of a delayed upload and telling me just go ahead and do a non-delayed upload. Go ahead. You were saying yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Raise your hand if you ever looked at this page before doing an NMU. Hmm. More than I expected. <laughs> yeah, because I've, ha I've had NMUs on my packages and I'm on the list, but people always delay them, in my experience. Here. Regarding the NMU equivalent for package removals, I'm not sure it needs additional process. The request of QA option often covers the same sort of case where a removal package would apply when there's not somebody maintaining it? Yeah, the problem is that so QA, the QA team in Debian is not really a, a formal entity. So you just join the mailing list Debian QA, and we, we say that everyone in Debian is QA. So even if we have the, the error of QA blah, thingy, people, don't, uh, people which have never worked with QA usually do not feel entitled to do that. So they rather maybe drop a message to Debian QA asking, can I do that? People on QA expect him to just add. He expects people from QA to reply. So we have some kind of impasse. And I mean, the point of NMU is that anyone, any single Debian developer can really be bold, can just go ahead and fix a problem. With the request of QA things, I think there is an additional step, which somehow I think with a process like that can be simplified. Christian? Yeah. I, I wanted to answer to Garden's um, concern about low threshold NMU. Uh, you probably know I'm Christian Perrier. I'm doing a lot of NMUs for 
completely non-RC stuff, some mm -hmm. localization stuff. So I, I did a lot of venues, and I never used the low threshold NMU list f for various reasons. I, I'm pretty sure that it is outdated. I also work offline, so I don't have access to it. And finally, uh, I think that direct direct interaction is quite good with miners, and uh, I, I think it is pretty much useless. I would prefer seeing in, in a package something saying, okay, you can NMU this package with a low threshold, no need to delay, et cetera, et cetera, a control field or something. I think it would, would be much more interesting. Yeah, something automatic that like deep boot can uh, recognize oh, and saying, look, you are doing a delayed MU, but you can really just go ahead and do that straight. Yeah, that's, that's an interesting idea. Oh, by the way, answer to my question. So from 4,000 packages which are on my system, I have 240 MU, so it's 5%. Not too high. Okay. And uh, what what's, uh, which distribution is that? I mean, it's stable testing. Oh, it's mixed. <laughs> <laughs> it's close to unstable, somewhere in the middle. Maybe testing. Okay. Um, and so it makes 5%, not too high, and half of them is 0.1. So they're just first stage of NMU. So it makes it to 5% of this first stage, and the rest is a little bit further, which is. I don't know, someone treats it maybe as a good or bad sign. So in general, we have packages which are properly packaged. And just 5%, it's about... Um, so just a little portion of packages which are NMU'd, and most of them are probably will be handled soon. Okay, thanks. In front so here, yeah. in, in, in your sorry. experience, when you did that, the RC bug fixing, uh, how did you end up package managed by teams? I mean, I, I had some people who were doing upload and EMU and didn't update the SVN or the Git repository. And so how okay, did you Okay, so, that? That, that's a, so basically the, the underlying point is how NMUs relates with version control system, team maintenance, and this kind of stuff. So formally, according to our rules, version control system for package maintenance simply does not exist. I mean, in NMUs, you just upload to the archive because in Debian, the only thing, I mean, the only official thing we have is the archive. So the versioning is the archive. In my experience, I simply didn't care about version control system. I just went ahead and uploaded to the archive, of course, posting the diff and blah, 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 with the, assum the, assum the assumption that if there is some proper version control system, then it would be easy for the maintainer to just take my diff and commit it as it is. But that's a good point. Do we need some specific rules for NMUing version con package which are version control maintained? Uh, the first garden? And I would like to have them, but because if I had an NMU and it's not in my version control system, it somehow annoys me, and if the NMU is like half a year ago, I tend to forget to integrate it. And uh, okay. okay, just a just comment about about use one one issue. Um, I or I think another question is: If you NMU, are you then responsible for bug reports for the package? If so, for how long? And two, is there any way we can automate that? So I did an NMU that caused another issue, and I just wasn't aware because I had done so many NMUs. Um, someone got with me and let me know it was my responsibility. That was easy, but since the BTS didn't notify me, I, the bug would have been fixed much quicker. So just a brief reply to that before you think. So the best. Practice, the best best practice that I've seen on that is one followed by Tolimar, Alec Schmel, and I've just noticed that for each NMU he does, he subscribes to the, I think to the bug that he fixed. I'm not sure if he subscribed to the old package in the PTS, but you can do both. So you can subscribe to the individual bugs. That's a bit telling because the, we have challenge response via email, and Don will shoot me probably for this for this comment. And uh, but you can also s subscribe to bug reporting altogether to that package. So we're just in first, just in first just and then... About, just about that there's a script in dev scripts for PTS subscribes that yes. allows to subscribe for months to, to a given package. All right, thanks. Just coming back to the VCS question. So I maintain my, most of my packages in, uh, in Git on, on Elliot, and while it's trivial to integrate uh, an NMU diff in the version control system, the problem is I'm not entirely sure that uh, the package that was uploaded uh, so if I rebuild from Git after the patch is applied, I would get an identical package. So yeah, for me, I would prefer that um, the NMU goes to Alioth directly, and then I know the, the, the patch is there correctly, the, the uploaded sources are from the Git tree, and so on. 
But anyway, it's trivial to apply for git at least uh, and diffs. Lucas? Uh, in most version control systems, it's pretty trivial to say, like, for example, git import uh, DSC, which will import the uh, source package from the archive. So it's not really, I don't think it's that difficult to import, is it? No, it's not. It's just then. Um, we have a workflow, right? For me, I consider packages that are maintained out of any VCS like bad. For uh, I tried, for example, to look at some some bugs, but maybe if if I have access to VCS, I wonder maybe this is already thing in the VCS is just not yet pushed. But if all I see for a package is the sources, then I cannot check that. So for me, I would rather favor in general a, a migration towards VCS maintained packages because then I think even the NMUs are easier, both in creating NMUs and integrating them later. There was Lucas first, I guess. I think that in the end, we're really good for developing really complex processes with ten, 10 steps. And I really like the current uh, NMU process, which is still quite simple. And if we need to check uh, a VCS, if we make it, make it mandatory to check a VCS before doing an NMU, then it will mean that less people will do NMUs because it will be harder. And I don't think that we should make this process complex. It's still the responsibility of the maintainer to um, commit the changes to the VCS. And I think that there are some teams who disclose the fact that NMUs commit to VCSE, so you would need to have a list of teams that accept it, a team of lists that don't want it, and then it will be a nightmare. So. Just a brief comment on that. I completely agree. What is interesting in having more liberal commit access rights, I think it's for bugs which are not as serious as us. I mean, small stupid thing. I mean, a typo in a package description or stuff like that. But it would be really great if anyone can commit to the VCS of other team. And by the way, shameless plug, you can do that on Alios. You can just ask the admin of Alios to set access control list on your repositories so that any Debian developer can commit to that. So we used to have that from the Debian OCaml team for when we were on SVN. I'm not sure if we ported that now that we are on Git. I frankly think we have never got a commit from uh, anyone else. But for instance, I have an experience with um, Grep Debian Control, the Grep DCTRL suite. Um, so there, they have a procedure in which any Debian developer can push to Git as long as the commit is um, signed by a key, which is in Debian key. So that's interesting too, and I use that for instance, and it's pretty interesting. No. It seems to me that it would be useful, as proposed by various people, if we had uh, a control field for this, as to go with the uh, for what a control field for you know NMU thresholds. We already have control fields for version control, and it should be fairly easy to put together a tool that combines those, so to to make it very easy for people to cooperate with version control systems if they want to do an NMU. Yeah, but I think the point of Lucas is still valid. You you shouldn't make that a requirement to do an NMU. So I mean, you should. That would be nice, and so that if you are want to be extra kind with the maintainer, you also follow the advi his advice on how to be kind with the VCS. But I think it should be a requirement because otherwise we'll get even less NMU, and I think the goal is having more NMU. Another complication with where are you? Okay. Another complication with automatically connecting to the VCS is that often a VCS server will have some additional code that has not been uploaded which then raises the question of whether that should be included when you do the NMO, which is currently against policy. Sure. Yeah, I agree with both of you that we shouldn't make the process more complicated, but I think we could do with at least encouraging uh, committing to this VCS if the maintainer wants it, for me at least. But I think the problem is also that sometimes NMU also create branches like in the history of the package if you have some small fixes I wouldn't mind if I just fix the typo and thought it's not worth an upload if the NMU just uploads this as well so if you want to go that way the first thing you need it's really for all VCS of, of we use for package maintenance in Debian to be committable by any DD and I've tried pushing for that like three four years ago but I think the initiative didn't really go far. So that, that's the first step. Before being able to say, you should also commit, we should have really VCS where anyone can commit. And we are not there. 
One problem with this could be that there's currently no way to advertise that you have a VCS that others can commit to. Wait, wait, wait for the mic. If that was the standard, that wouldn't be a problem. And the other thing is that we have many different VCSs. Everybody uses his own. If we had like one common one, then everything would be easier. On the other hand, it would be harder to push everybody towards a common one. So I'm not sure it's worth it. But the point is, if we, for example, standardized on one thing, and that was the way for Debian packages, then everybody would just do that, right? Until everybody needs to install a different version control system to upload to a package and things like that and learn how it works basically and so on, it doesn't make sense. It's too much of a threshold. There's a question over there. Listen. Coming back to um, the actual process of doing one and uh, one RC back per day and so on, um, I wonder if you have any suggestions on how to actually find. Uh, so for me, the problem is I look, I try to look for RC bugs. Uh, I find some bugs, and then I see, wait, there is a context already to this bug. Somebody maybe has tried to work on it, didn't manage to fix it. So, actually finding, identifying good and uh, new candidates to me seems non-trivial. Do you have any insight into that? I think Lucas has some spam to add on that. This. Yeah. So, one thing that. Uh uh, the URL? Uh, there's no real good page for it currently. Okay. But uh, there's a set of uh, TGI scripts using UDD that uh, give some list of uh, ending RC bugs. But it really requires someone to take the script, improve them, and just publish them somewhere. They need more love, but uh, just talk to me but if you want to work on that. You can, uh, that's. But there is a query online. Yeah, there's one. So. You know where? No. <laughs> slash uh, TGIB slash RC Both bugs. Them. Oh, yeah. RC bugs. Yeah. It's quite it's quite easy to write custom queries uh, to find specific uh, kind of RC bugs like RC bug dispatches or. Yeah, it's a bit slow. Yeah, <laughs> beside that, uh, my um, source for that is BTS to the uh, web. <laughs> Is the BTS to the uh, .net page? Uh, you know that? Okay. So, and I started from that, and then I I've learned to like uh, having some good eye to spot the good candidates. Like you choose the one which are not too young, because usually can be if you have an RC bug against a package maintained by a really active person, usually it will get fixed in a few days, and it's really not worth to spend your time on something that will be fixed anyhow by the maintainer. So you usually have to look for the old ones, like more than two weeks or something like that. And then you can fiddle with the releases. And usually, what I do is aiming at the one which affects the, the next release. So these are my few rule of thumbs. Christian? Yeah, I'd like to jump to something else in this area about uh, NMUs and fixing bugs. I think that all these campaigns have shown that now NMUs are quite well accepted for our bugs. I can testify that NMUs are well accepted for any kind of bugs, actually. And we are moving this way in Debian. And I would encourage people who would be interested to do that. I do that for localization stuff because, because this is my pet thing, you know. And if you have your pet thing to, to fix, a lithium warning you would like to want to disappear, you can go ahead for that. And most maintainers will welcome this. Uh, as long as you take care to have a very good communication, as Zach said, that this is the best way to start the process, uh, to have a good communication. The very first email is the most important. And I, I get a few con conflicts with maintainers because my, I didn't take care enough to write the first email. So. And I think we can move this way fast and improve the quality of the overall distribution by doing this. Let's think about it. Enemies are wonderful. I can have a better package without doing any work. So just a comment or perhaps a proposal. Um, without even adding a field to uh, dead control, couldn't we just uh, add, if a maintainer is willing to allow low threshold enemies, they could add uh, Debian QA 
as the uploader as an uploader field? But, yes. But the question is, is it really useful? I mean, if with the current rules you can already go ahead and do an emulate without caring about the low threshold stuff, is it really useful to add something else? I, I think, I mean, and maybe they're just not vocal today, but the, there are some developers who, who don't appreciate having their package in Immune. Um, maybe they don't come to Well, okay, now. I can be sure for the f next, uh, next statement, but I mean, there are just a few of them, and everyone else wants to go a different way. The current rules, which are quite conservative, in fact, I think are, are just fine. Agreed. I was the one who pushed for those rules, and they were really, really painful uh, to come up with. So let's not try to change them again uh, <laughs> anytime soon. So in reply to Christian, I was wondering, so these are the current rules for actually doing an amuse. So if you're up uploading a fix for a nasty bug, which is older than seven days, you can just go ahead and upload it to delayed too. If you're uploading a fix which fixes RC or and or important bugs, then you can go ahead and upload it to delayed five. And for every every other NMUs, ten days. So the last point actually says that you can NMU Lucas correct me if I'm aware the, the author of this of this. So you can just go ahead and do an MU to fix any kind of bug. Even a wish list bug as long as you give the maintainer at least ten days. So I think this is actually enough to, to go ahead with what Christian suggested. I mean, using an amuse to do a regular work in packages. You just require there is actually a bug. So you're not allowed to an a package just because you don't like the way the, the maintainer impacted it. That, that's, that's not acceptable. But you can actually use an amuse to do work on the package of other people. As long as you are polite and you expect all the rules of um, sending a, a depth diff, you minimize the changes, and, and you upload to the delay. Well, those are recommended values. You should not upload. Well, you should yeah, that's the make minimum. sure. Yeah. That's the minimum, yes. Usually for, I, I actually didn't pass any use for non-RC ba non bugs, and I used uh, 14. Because the point is that at least eventually it will happen, and they maintain all the needed time to actually react if he doesn't like what you did. Um, I just wanted to say that I think that just because people want to have more information available as to what the maintainer's mindset is on his package versus the actual rules as written. They don't need to be, like, you don't need to change the rules, right? You keep the rules the same and just put in a couple extra fields that are like, this developer hasn't put, uploaded any, book, uh, any fixes to any package for, packages for three years. That maybe should be indicated on the, you know, base package website. Or this maintainer, Loves NMUs, so give them to me. Or a field that says, yeah, make sure you check my Git repository on it earlier. You know? it, I don't think adding that little bit extra information in somewhere very easy to get to, like the package website, would cost anything. And I don't think well, you need to change the rules to do that. Yes and no. I mean, there is at least the effort of standardizing some field and actually getting it popular. I mean, for the VCS fields, it took like years. So there is, anyhow, a little bit of effort, I mean, but, but you're completely right. So if the information exists and it's currently on a web page which is completely unparsable and this kind of stuff, it will be way better to actually have a field. But we need someone which actually go ahead, propose it, and drive the standardization of this kind of stuff. <laughs> Wouldn't the most straightforward way that requires no changes whatsoever to like fields and control, just to be put a note in Debian and readme.debian, the canonical place to have information about packaging. Just if you do that, you will up with uh, 10 different ways of writing that note. and So you just read it. Right? Tons of different places where you need to, to look for it. So that, that, that's the problem. I mean, the value of standardization is that you, you know where to look for. In readme.debian. What? If you put it in the readme file, which you're supposed to read before you do work on a package, then. You mean readme.source, that kind of stuff? Yeah, readme.source, readme.debian. Yeah. Yep, that's a, also big. Anything else? Don? Um, so just in case anybody doesn't know, I, I'm one of the primary maintainers of the BTS. Um, and one of the things that uh, has long been a goal of mine to do is to get more people involved in interviewing to make uh, findings easier, to make identifying RC bugs that have uh, fixes or that 
haven't been looked at that need a fix easier to identify uh, what the current status of a bug is um, and all those two things. So there are some features that currently exist in the BTS to make this easier um, and there are a lot of other features that are, are needed. Um, so if, if there are, uh, it's sort of not totally on topic for this buff, but it's related. So if in between now and I think Tuesday is when the dev bugs buff is, if you can continue to think about things that would be um, better, uh, then uh, we can discuss it there. I mean, because I know that finding a, an RC bug to fix is half the battle of making Absolutely. the enemy. Any other comments? So I think the, the best bottom line is the one that Christian put it as it. You all have the feeling that nowadays enemies are welcome. May, I'm not saying that they're welcome by anyone in Debian, but in general they are welcome. And that the current rules are both conservative enough and uh, allowed to work on packages of other people. In my own experience, that will uh, that you receive a lot of thank you and really, really few flames. So I think it's totally worth to go ahead and use this kind of way, first of all, to our release to happen, our releases to happen, and actually also improve the work of others in a very, in a quite simple way. So thank you for attending, and see you on the.